Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our series on Satisfactory 1.0. I've uh, played quite a bit since the last update. I messed with some blueprint stuff over there, and I did a lot of hard drive hunting. I found probably 10 more hard drives, and I've been researching them. The problem is, there's currently a bug where you can't actually see all of your options, and so you have to, like, search for them to find them. It's quite annoying. Um, I don't totally understand what's going on there. I feel like someone should have tried, you know, researching 13 hard drives, especially given that you can build them up to wait to make your decisions. I feel like that's something that people would have done in playtesting. So this feels like a little bit of a weird bug that didn't get caught. Um, and the other bug, which I think, did we talk about this in the last episode? But this doesn't work either. We, we handcrafted a hundred freaking motors to get the hard drive scanner working the research that you do in the MAM in the quartz chain, this one, and it doesn't even work because it's bugged as well. And so there's a couple bugs that have, you know, bothered me about hard drives. So those will probably get fixed soon, though. I have faith. Um, I'm not going to complain too much about it, but it is annoying. Um, it is annoying. But with all my hard drive hunting, I found lots of computers. So I'm going to research the alien power augmenter if I can blah, 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 say words. And we're going to see if we have the resources we need to build it. I don't know what it requires to build, but I will be able to at least research it here in three minutes when that's done. And in this episode, we're mostly going to be focusing on building. So I'll probably pause multiple times, you know, the recording while I'm while I'm doing some building. But the, the base plan is I'm going to go over here and we're going to build a very large factory building in this region. Uh, it's gonna be big. We're talking like, like four of these put together, maybe more than that. And that's because I just want a big space. And we're gonna bring in all the ores to that building and that'll be kind of the main base of operations. I'll build it off the ground like I have with these, probably one, one higher than that. Uh, we'll have to cut down some trees. And that's the only thing I'm concerned about are these two rocks. I will run into those at some point if I build out that far, but I probably don't need to. And I can always build around them. Like I don't mind a little bit of cool, like tree house aesthetic, you know, where you build around a thing. Um, <laughs> H is YouTube. You haven't had time to automate feeding a steel foundry. You know, that's the funny thing about the game is the only time you have is for automating. The whole game is for automating. It's funny how we can not automate things in a game about automation. But I know exactly what you mean, and I do the same thing. Um, but yeah, I'm still using Versatile Framework to get points here. And we have a lot of coupons. I think a decent amount... Let me wait till the framework's gone. I think a decent amount of these coupons are actually from... Uh, the polymer that we're depositing over, I don't know why I'm pointing, it's not on the screen, but over in the the oil area, which is what, over here, I think? Yeah, somewhere around here we're getting oil, and that's uh, good. I also marked a few of the deposits. There's so many deposits. Um, I would personally prefer I would prefer a version of the scanner where when you do this and it gives you those, you could click on it and like save it to the map, if that makes sense. Um, Cause it's really tedious to have to make a new uh, marker for every single node that you find out in the wild like it's it's not that bad But I find it kind of tedious. You got to go to new map marker You got to place it down You got to type stuff in and then you hit tab because you know It goes to the next field in normal life But no in this game it escapes out and now you have to go back into the map And then you have to go back to your marker and it deleted everything you did because it doesn't auto save And then you got to start typing stuff in and if you want the color and the icon, and it's weird that there's no icons here for ore types. Like, why would there not be icons here for ore types? That, that would be nice. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a little painful. I wish there was an easier way to do map markers. 
there there was something yeah these are I okay never mind so you can get more icons but not for like ores they're all just kind of the the white and black icon type things ooh glass roof material that's cool I'm gonna have to buy a bunch of stuff once I I kind of want to buy everything in one big go but I know that'll be ridiculous. Um, okay, so let's watch the points for a second and we'll see when the polymer shows up. Does that actually take off a lot of points? 57,500. Huh, why is that not changing? I thought we were regularly feeding polymer To, I guess it's not polymer, or is it? I can't remember anymore. Is it polymer? Yeah. If you feed items into a different awesome sink, does it have a different uh, progress bar? Glass roofing to solve the problem that your ceiling lights suck. That's possible, but the problem there, B. Jonas, is then it's you can't build on that so if you have multiple floors that doesn't work it works for the top floor i guess um your oil factory is terrible h's youtube yeah it's there's a lot to oil man this is really bothering me at some point we're just gonna have to start selecting stuff i guess but anyway let's go ahead and research um i need a couple more of the fluctuators we're going to research the power augmenter, and that's going to be very exciting. Well, I don't know if it'll be exciting. We'll see. It'll be less exciting if we can't build it. Uh, but we can research it, so that's exciting. Huzzah! And what's that? Power matrix. Yeah, so you probably Power like need those unlocked. to build one. Summer sloops naturally harvest. 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 Yes, harvest energy from distant sources and distribute it locally. The Power Augmenter supercharges summer sloops by feeding it local power, increasing its harvesting range and efficiency, and thus power output. Basically, the more power it's given, the more it provides. I can build one. It will shred and tear and unravel the threads. Many temples burned. Good to know, that confirms that hypothesis. Except they cost, oh no. They cost 10 summer sloops? Oh geez, that's so many. <laughs> Build it, it gives you power. Uh, CCTV Bandit, I'm not sure what the train recipes are actually. I haven't touched trains yet. And I probably will eventually, but this game feels harder to argue for trains than, than like, Factorio. Um, they just feel way less necessary in this game, but it could be awesome. I did not expect this to cost 10 summer sloops. I'm trying to decide if I want... <sighs> The reason I'm I'm thinking I may not want to do it is because summer sloops are a limited resource. You only get so many, at least as far as I am aware. And I, you can put them, you know, in buildings to multiply your output. And in your late game base, like, you're gonna want summer sloops to multiply outputs of things, and if you have 10 less sloops to multiply outputs, that's a big deal. Um, so, I don't know if I want to build that yet, actually. Oh, you're right, you do need to fuel it. I forgot about that, too. So, uh, yeah. I think, sadly, we will not build this yet, but someday, someday. 10 sloops is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, Code Cone, I think you have to feed it with the, um, 
Don't you have to feed it with the fancy tier 9 stuff? Or am I making that up? Maybe you don't. The alien plasma goo that goes in pipes. Or maybe not. I don't remember. In any case, um, that is a little bit of a bummer that it costs that many sloops. I was expecting it to not cost sloops, and you would just have to put one sloop inside of it. Kind of like you put... Uh, kind of like you put one in here. I thought it was going to be like that type of thing. I don't know, Vatamouse. If there's a way to make more summer sloops, they didn't spoil it at all, and I haven't heard anybody talking about it. They specifically mentioned the ability to make more power shards, but not Mercer Spheres and Summer Sloops. So, yeah. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, is there any other unlocks we need? Can't do the Power Matrix. I could now upgrade my Dimensional Depot stacks. I have quite a few. I think I'll do the stack increase again. Um... I can do priority power switches. Eh. I can do smart splitters. I just don't care about smart splitters yet anyway. I'm sure at some point I'll care. Gas novelists. Synthetic power shards. I can do the ray. Oh, I can do that now. I do have 50. 50 thing. Yeah, Parley Trucker, I do like the upgrade speed, uh, the speed upgrades, but I already have 30 a minute and I haven't, I haven't really ran into any problems yet with 30 a minute. That, like once in a while, I need a couple thousand for a milestone or something, a couple thousand, just 1000. But when you need a thousand of something for a milestone, that can get a little obnoxious. But otherwise, I haven't had any issues. Uh, I do have some of those. All right, so we'll get the radar tower. And... I kind of want to do some of this radar sulfur tower stuff, unlocked. but... The tower reveals resource nodes and other useful information on the map in a set radius from its location. Wait, you need comp... That's annoying. Well, I have to research compacted coal. Oh wait, doesn't compacted coal go? Yeah, okay, never mind. Maybe that's not annoying. Uh, that might be the recipe for turbo fuel. Um, I can't remember. But yeah, these require hard drives, so I'm gonna do them now before I accidentally spin the hard drives. Compacted coal unlocked. It is physically smaller and more powerful, but its carbon footprint remains enormous. This fuel upgrade can be used in coal-powered generators and vehicles. So basically, sulfur more than doubles the fuel value of coal. So if you just if you have a bunch of extra sulfur, I guess you can you can do that. Um, I just need to make a little bit real quick for that research. Let's do that. Um, go fast, please. Uh, what bonuses? Uh, does turbo fuel give? It just is worth more fuel. I believe. Yeah, it is sarcasm is great. There have been a bunch of funny interactions. That's the only bummer about me exploring off screen is there have been a lot of funny interactions between Ada and the alien people when I collect like summer sloops and mercer spheres. Um, so, you know, those get missed when I'm not recording, but... Shouldn't it be giving me 20 every other? How does that work? Oh, it's just giving me 10 instead of 5. Oh, if I only have one summer sloop, does it... Um, go every other? I don't know how that works. Or will it do 7 and then 8 and then 7 and then 8? Uh, I think it just alternates around the number. But what if it's like, uh, you know, not a nice number? I guess it'll always be 0.5 because it always gives you whole numbers by default. 
Although the manufacturer might require force loops. I don't know yet. Um, anyway, I have some compacted coal now. Go team. Get up there. Sulfur, turbo fuel. Research that. And what's this? Rocket fuel. <laughs> nice. Turbo fuel unlocked. This upgrade to regular fuel is optimal for fuel powered generators, jetpacks, and fulfilling long distance trucker fantasies. <laughs> awesome. All right, so then. I don't have sulfur at the base. I'm just storing it way out there. So we'll have to deal with that another time, but I would like to get the cluster nobelisk things. All right, well, let's start. Let's start working on. Oh, Mark IV belts. That's the one. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I did get Mark IV belts ready to go here. We'll go ahead and launch that. Hooray. Milestone reached. The transportation of resources can reach new heights of efficiency. With the Mark IV belts and lifts, the truck, but even more importantly, your effort. Handling a large and complicated vehicle like the truck should come easy to a well-trained pioneer such as you. They are an obvious improvement over tractors concerning industrial purposes. Improvements for personal use were not measured. I mean... It just holds more stuff. Is it that much better? <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never quite understood why we need two vehicles. They feel basically the same. Um, I know they're they're not, but like it holds basically twice as much, which is nice. But it's it feels like they could have just given us the truck from the beginning. And does that really change anything? Because the the tractor is more than good enough for any of the purposes you would ever need it for before having the truck. So basically, they could have just given you the truck from the beginning and that wouldn't be more broken. It wouldn't be overpowered because it's not like the tractor... It's uh, The inventory limit of the tractor is never your bottleneck in the, in the early game because you get the truck not that late. I mean, of course... Yes, you could come up with scenarios where the tractor gets in your way by only having 25 slots, but like, that's a pretty big throughput already. So I feel like just giving you the truck from the beginning would make sense. But then again, I don't know. I don't use trucks all that much, but yeah. Okay, here we go. This is the moment. We now have Mark IV launchers and we can really yeet ourselves across the map. Oh, this feels so good. This is how you get around the map in style. Look at this. Just look at it. So nice. Little 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 boosts of jetpack. And then I do I like to build um I like to build foundations around And then I will just Go ahead and connect some belts on the end. And that's just like a little launch pad and you can just get going, you know, any which way you want to go. Nice and easy. Yeah, the Mark VI belts are going to be nuts. The Mark Vs are already pretty nuts. All right, well, let's start building. Uh, we are gonna global grid, of course. And I think I want the corner. Well, which way is the global grid? That way? Okay. So yeah, I want the back end to kind of be near the space elevator thing. I'll probably start with the corner like right here. Vertical. Keep hitting button too many times. All right, click. How high do we need to get? Uh, CCTV. You mentioned Elite Dangerous. That game, I freaking love it and hate it, and I think most people agree. 
that they love it and hate it. It, it's it's such wasted potential. Um, it really, it it's so frustrating because the the bones of that game are easily the best space flight sim and space combat sim ever created. The sound design, the visual design, the feel of flying a ship. Flying with flight assists off, they're all so good. And and yet, they just can't seem to make a fun solo game. Instead, they're making this weird pseudo-MMO crap that nobody cares about. I say nobody, lots of people like it, but I just... It, it certainly is not the game I really wanted it to be, and that just made me very sad. Um, I just wanted it to be so much more of like a, a game you could just really enjoy playing solo. Should I go with four meter foundations? No. No, I should go with the two meters. The four meters are too fatsy. Fatsy fat. I hope I didn't just deconstruct a belt way over there. Okay. So that will be 11 by 11 with what I just did. And then we can go maybe 10 more. Will this be 21? Wait, was that 10? That didn't feel like 10. I feel like I just built less than 10. Uh, let's go find out. Can you rocket jump? I don't know. I'm scared to try. <laughs> Alright, there's 10. Maybe I did build 20. Maybe 10 more. Yeah, okay. So that's 21, and we still have room for even a couple more if we want to. Should I go 25? Do 25 by 25. Um, let's see. So what's the way I want to do this? I'm at 22. If I were to go out twice, so I need to do three this way, and then that's five. Yeah, the NPC combat's easy. I always felt like flight assist off is so fun that they should have built race tracks. You know, there's it's like flight assist off is so fun, but only if there are things to fly around and do stuff with. So they needed to make like, you know, race tracks that have they're like, you know, inside space station race tracks or like there's a sort of racetrack with that's like a very dense asteroid field or asteroid and scrap or something but uh yeah i don't know it just felt like they never quite realized the full potential of that game even after multiple dlcs and many years of developing it every time i read about an update oh i guess this is where the upload rate matters <laughs> for the uh <laughs> dimensional depots but yeah, every time they release an update, I was just kind of like, yeah, that's not stuff that I care about. Oh, well. Oh, well. I'll just manually grab 2,000 Crete. And some plates. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm still trying to decide what we're gonna do for the uh, the walls here. So like, I like the look that we have going for the space elevator one with the walls being around the base, but I also like this platform look where they stand on little legs. So I'm not sure which way I wanna go for this building. Do I wanna put it on legs and have the basement open air? Or do I want to put walls around it and have the basement closed off? And then I can really spaghetti the basement that way. And that is a plus. So I don't know. 
It's also very convenient that the amount of concrete and iron you need for foundations is in the same ratio that they stack that the stack sizes are. Alright, there's that. That's five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is now 15 by 25. Okay. That's only true for the default foundation. Ah, uh, makes sense. I'm gonna run out of resources again. Maybe we're okay. I will need to do some chainsawing. Oh, just enough. Okay. Just enough. Alright, let's do some chainsaw. Or, you know what? I have a better idea. Do some bombing. Way more fun this way. Who needs wildlife habitats? I think I already got this one. Uh, I'm actually above a lot of these trees. What blueprints have I made? I've made um, just some basic ones for, you know, like a set of constructors with manifolds, a set of smelters with manifolds. I do have a new design that I really like for those that I will be making a separate series on YouTube for. So that's fun. I'm gonna get rid of these while I'm here. All right, you ready for the fireworks? Did I get this one? I got this one. Let's go get a good vantage point here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. That'll do it. So... Do I want feet or do I want walls? You know what I might even do? I, I think I'm gonna do walls. And there will be places that'll be open for, for trucks to drive in at the bottom. And there'll be uh, like holes in the side for uh, belts to come in. I did build this on the global grid, right? I'm not, like, about to make a huge mistake. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. Just want to make sure I, I did that right. Okay. So, I don't want the wall, though, at its default color is the problem. Um, so, we're going to have to... I really wish you could set... Like, is there a way... Because I can swatch stuff that way, but is there a way to build as a certain color? Without that being the default? Or am I gonna have to swatch, swatchify everything? There is a way, but you forgot how. Okay, well, crap. C, 
Sample building, quick switch, build menu. Does that do it? No, that switches to the customizer. Um... It's not in here. <laughs> How do you do this? Because that just builds with that style. You like shift middle mouse button to copy copy swatch control middle mouse no I'm also curious what the shiny versus matte Can you even tell Those all feel very shiny to me. Huh. Wait, that didn't apply. What the heck? I just changed it, but then it like didn't change. You have to re. I, I, I don't have to click, I'm just looking at things and it's fixing it. Is that a bug? It feels like a bug. Anyway, uh, for those of you from future YouTube, I'm gonna mess with this for a bit. I'll pause the recording and we'll be back after we've wallified this area off. Hello, future YouTubians. We are back and you might be wondering hey, that's not the building you were building. That's your oil area, and yeah, that's because our power went out, and I couldn't figure out why, and it's because I didn't sink the excess uh, plastic that we're making and rubber, and since we're not making plastic and rubber anymore, we're not making uh, petroleum coke anymore, and without petroleum coke, those six uh, coal plants ain't running, or 5.4 coal plants to be exact. So we need to... We actually need now priority splitters, which is funny because I was just talking about not needing those yet. Um, and here we are. So I do have an awesome sink up there. And so I'm going to go ahead and connect things here such that half of our plastic can go that way. It still does not solve why power consumption was ramping up. No, it doesn't. I, just, I don't know what that was about. Um, yeah, I really don't. Uh, but we can at least get the plastic hooked up here. This is such a mess. Oh my gosh. I really need to redo all this. Really, really, really. You come over there. This goes back into that. Now we're spaghetti in. This is the spaghetti you all came to this channel for. Yeah, this is the spaghetti that gets the Twitch Prime subs. Hey, thank you. Manita. 
appreciated. You know what? I don't care how ugly this is. It just needs to work. I'm doing well, Manny. Except for the part where our power is turned off. Okay, I think... That now is getting everything done. So how do we spin this back up? If I disconnect the main line, it probably won't work because everything here is completely out of power. Are we out of power because of the coal? Probably. These are probably all empty. No, that one has 86. So what I can do... Oh, and I have some coal. I have some compacted coal in my inventory. Perfect. And they have water. Okay, I'm glad they have water because that's the one thing I can't carry in my inventory. But I can give them all some manual fuel that they'll burn through. What am I trying to do? Oh, there we go. Um, and then that should be enough time to get the other things running. I hope. Okay. That should do it. So, fire this back up. Perfect. Uh huh. There we go. That's what we like to see. That's the stuff. And we should be getting a lot of awesome points, too, which is kind of a nice little byproduct of this nonsense I've set up. We have 46 coupons. That's kind of insane. Um, yeah, I don't know why I didn't uh, foresee this happening. I'm normally pretty good about know knowing that things will back up. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened. All right, so that should be good. I don't think I need to do anything. I, it's possible because of the manifold balancing that we could get screwed over. But it's only six, so I think we're okay. If you have like 20 or 30 things um, in a manifold, it, you actually have to be really careful when things haven't started up because the, the 30th thing down the row is not going to see any inputs for a long time. So if you're doing like what I just did where I manually fed them with coal, like you might need even more than a whole stack for that one at the end before it'll see its first input. What am I hearing? An enemy trying to attack me? All right. Yeah, CCTV, when you summer sloop up an assembler, it like adds cool special effects. Isn't that awesome? All right. Nope. Damn it. Now what the problem is. Now the problem is I don't have batteries, is the problem. Um. Well. could build more biomass burners to try to smooth over the issue. But I don't know if this is gonna... Wow, I really have nothing. Um, I don't know if that's how we want to do it. Um... Okay, well I can reconnect it. I guess I don't need to I don't need to leave it disconnected because now now that's running properly again. Uh oh, you're right. Thank you, Badamus. I still haven't reconnected the main coal generators. That will do it. That'll do it. Okay, well, uh for you future YouTubians, I'm gonna pause again. We'll be back. <laughs> Just wanted to share this with you, because you know. 
Not everything goes perfectly all the time. All right, future satisfactorians. Satisfactorians. Aha, uh -huh, we're back. We have now completed the base for the Lodro factory building, named after a Patreon supporter. Get your name in the name randomizer, and we got supports on the inside, and a little pathway through here. I'll probably do pathways on all four sides, but for now we just have the two. You can see again, the Lodro factory building. And yeah, this is where we're gonna do pretty much all of our processing moving forward. I might repurpose these buildings later, but they're pretty fine the way they are. I do need an easy way to get up here. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna do zip lines, probably not zip lines. I'll probably do hyper tubes just to get the verticality. Um, bounce pads are another option, but they only get you so far. And I don't know if bounce pads will get me up here very easy. So yeah, we'll we'll be using our blueprints. I do have some new blueprints, by the way. Uh, like, check this out. So I will be doing some videos on this, or they'll probably already be out by the time you're watching at this point in the series. But I really like this uh, build. It allows me to uh, have the belts up off the ground. These are perfectly modular, so I could just plop three of these in a row and have nine assemblers running. And it's very tight, right? Like, so there's no wasted space apart from um, one single lift on the front and back. So in terms of front to back space, it's as small as possible, uh, which is really nice. And it's still fairly compact vertically. It uses a little bit of extra vertical space compared to if we didn't go up above, but we could still, you know, fit another floor on top of this pretty easily. I haven't done it for foundries yet, and I haven't done it for refineries or, um, what else is there? Refineries and the other one, the packager, or any of those yet. But the main buildings I've finished, assemblers, smelters, and, uh, constructors, so. That is what we'll be using, and I'll be, you know, making those blueprints as needed. We should probably go work on the one for the foundry right now, actually, because we're going to be using foundries a lot. But it's a pretty handy blueprint. I'm considering... So, I haven't shown you yet. The one for the constructors is an 8x version. And basically, I want to have a 4x and an 8x version for each. Check this out. The, the constructor one is really weird. Um... Does it make setting recipes annoying? Um, I mean, it's always kind of annoying as far as I'm aware. Like, you have to walk up to every individual building to set the recipe by copy-pasting. I'm pretty sure there's no way around that. As far as I know. I really wish there was a way when you paste a blueprint to select the recipe for all of them. So let me show you this one. This one was a bit of a pain because in the blueprint constructor, I don't have the 5x5 version yet. And when you put four constructors next to each other, it was a little too big to put the conveyor lift on the end here. So my original plan was to have them all merge kind of on the floor level because the conveyor fronts are facing into each other. So that way you're sharing a merger, which actually makes it even more compact, right? Um, but then the problem was I couldn't put a lift on the front to go back up to elevated uh, belts, you know, because this is input, that's output, basically. So what I ended up doing is I have each pair of constructors are merging into a merger, and then those two are merging into that merger, and these two mergers are going into this merger, which then has space for a lift off the side of it to go up to a belt over here. So that one was pretty tricky to, uh, to get figured out, but we got there in the end. And so I'll probably do another version of this where I take off four of the constructors because not every build wants to have constructors in the, you know, two of them facing each other array. But it's pretty nice because, you know, these splitters, the belt goes off to the side and into a vertical one down into the back of that constructor. And the power, the power took me a minute to figure out too. I did use little pillars to put power poles on so that then those wires would go over uh, these conveyor lifts. 
And then, how did I power up the other side? Well, I put this, you'll notice uh, that beam is a little taller here, and I put a wall mount, and that goes across the middle, because there's nothing kind of in the middle of the build, to the same one over here. And then I have the same thing going on for these four. So all the power is connected. You can power up any of these power lines to power the whole build. And yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. That was, that was a fun one to build. And let's work on the one for foundries. It should be pretty simple. That's the hope. Oh, I still haven't finished the smelter one yet. The smelter is going to be a 6... 6x, I think. Um, I could just do a 4x. Maybe I should just do a 4x. I don't know. But, uh... Let's see if we can do the one for foundries. How many foundries fit in here? Probably three only. Yeah. Let's get them a little more centered. Oh yeah, and you also want them to face towards the computer, I've learned, because it weirdly like, the arrow that it shows is pointing this way. So if you want the arrows to be the output direction, then you need to actually build them facing you, which for some reason is backwards for how my brain thinks. I would think you'd build it facing, like, away from this little computer station, but it kind of goes in line with the way it's facing. Anyway, this one is going to be a bit trickier because we're not going to be able to fit belts above these very easily. I think we're just going to have to go pretty high up. Um, by pretty high, I mean like very high. And I think this is the spot. Looks like four and five can be our two inputs. Uh, let's see if this works. That would be overlapping, so three, four, five. And so we'll go across the top. There is minor clipping with the very tippy toppy of this. Uh, but am I okay with that? It doesn't show up through the bottom of the belt. Would it show up with a different, with a thinner, like if it was a Mark II belt? I'm actually curious. No, you can't see it. All right, I find that acceptable. It's just the smidgenest of clips. Okay, so the way you line these up, it's a little weird sometimes. What you have to do... Oh, thank you, Fix-It Management. Welcome. <laughs> you go up two for each level, so this will be up four. And then you place the merge, or I guess this is a splitter because we're doing inputs. And sometimes it locks with control, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't lock, there's a strategy for that too. So when it does lock, you place the splitter, locked by holding control, I mean. And then you deconstruct it. And then you go back to build the lift and it'll snap. You can hear the little click. And that means it's all good to go. And then you do that four times. And now for the one above it, we'll just go one taller for the uh, vertical lift here. So you go up one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll have to do the same thing, build a splitter. And this one's not locking. Notice I'm holding control and it's not snapping. So then what you do to fix that is you build it on the vertical lift and then you can hold control and it will snap to the other splitter and then you deconstruct that splitter deconstruct the lift rebuild the lift it snaps and and when it snaps you don't need to build a belt between them they're connected so there you go and then it's perfectly clean manifolding um you know the belts are nice and compact and they're above the building, so you don't have to worry about that. This is uh, a smidgen of clipping here. If you don't like that, you could raise it up one higher, and that would be fine. Um, obviously, it just makes the whole thing taller. 
but that's personal preference, I guess, at that point. I'm okay with this level of clipping. And yeah, and then the output, you know, you just do kind of what we just did for the output. Uh, right there. Level four. If you did them the other way around, that would avoid the clipping. I don't know what you mean by the other way around. What do you mean by the other way around? Oh, I see what you're saying. If you put the one on level three over here. Actually, yeah, no, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, like that, it's like this. Yeah. No, that's, that's better. I like that. Um... But yeah, uh, so let's let's actually get this. Now, the, the thing I just ran into, though, in my head is, do I want to make this a six foundry build? Oh, no, I kind of like the idea of a six foundry build. Um, I'll start with three. I guess I can turn it into a six later. But, okay, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Six. Four. Four, five, six. Oh, I guess I can count by the cost. Yeah, interesting. Okay. One, two, three, four. So basically, once it goes to ten, you've gotten into the new one. You want the taller version of eight. Interesting. Okay. Next is that. And the output. Where are we going? The output comes back from the other way. Oh, I still haven't built the conveyor poles on this side. Um. I want it there, right? Yeah, you always want the right edge of the pole basically in line with the output uh, framing, and that is what will make it line up properly with these lifts. Okay, it's really nice when the splitters just snap or the mergers snap as they're supposed to, which these are, so that's nice. Because then you can just build those, and all you have to do is rebuild the lifts. And that connected. Make sure you listen for the little click. Perfect. Okay, so outputs are all done. Um, inputs, we need a lot of splitters here. So that lines up. That one's not lining up, so you gotta do both. Yeah, Vatamouse, I might be able to duplicate it. The problem is uh, we'll have to change this part, right? When we build two of them facing into each other, we'll have to change these into mergers along the bottom and then do a single lift, and then that changes where the output belt ends up um, because the mergers here... I get Actually, if we... No, we might be able to make it work. Never mind. Because uh, with the constructors, there wasn't enough room for a, mer for a vertical on the end like that to go up and then to the side, but with these there should be, uh, especially with the direction I'm going, there's plenty of room on the end. So we might be okay. Oh, wait. There will still be a merger here because this one will be rotated around and then the output will be on the right. So we'll need like six mergers. I don't know, we'll see. I think there's enough room because the foundries don't take up the whole space. Four constructors took up the entire space and that's why there wasn't enough room. With this one, I don't think that's the issue. Now, I am questioning if this is one of the spaces where having some light might be nice. If I put a street light here, does it actually light something up? I 
mean, barely. It's so lame. The light doesn't even get over to here. Like, it's so lame. And look at how big this thing is for how little an area it lights up. I don't understand this. I don't understand. All right, anyway, what was I doing? Other than complaining about lights? Ah, yes, the vertical. Weird. Did you see that? It, like, wasn't letting me build it there. And then after a second or two, it did. That was weird. Okay. So, all the belts are hooked up. We're basically done. We just need to power it. Um, power is always a little bit tricky. In this case, I think I'm good to put the poles on the back corner. I do generally put one power pole per machine, unless it looks really nice to have one for two machines. Um, but yeah, that, that actually... Uh, no, that's going to clip with the items. Never mind. I always forget about that. Uh, that'll clip with the items coming up on the conveyors. So instead, I should have it going maybe... Here. Yeah, that should be okay. That won't clip through the items. I'm right in the edge of that metal piece right there. Power. could build a ceiling and add let yeah <sighs> that's an idea i guess way up at the top um i'm actually curious what that would uh let's see here's how much light we actually get off of that Had one way up there. Of course, now it's uh, daytime, so we won't know. So that light seems to get to a lot of it, but still not the whole thing. I would need like four. Also, I feel that that looks very bad. Those straight lines that come off of that. It's like the god rays effect, but that shouldn't be happening from just normal fluorescent lights, right? It's not like it's there's no smoke in here, you know? I don't know. I'm I'm not a huge fan of the lighting in this game. Um, the lighting options lumen on or off, to be honest. I kind of wish nighttime wasn't a thing because of how the lighting options aren't great. Uh, I just, I like lighting to be a bit simpler than, than it is. Anyway, I'll stop complaining about lights. I've already complained about light twice now. It is just hard to build in the dark sometimes. That's why I have complained. Okay, these are done, right? One, two, three, those are all connected. Yeah. Inputs and outputs are all done. So, I think we're good to go. So we save this guy as Foundries X3 Mark 4. I do need to redo my blueprints to Mark 4ify them. Because uh, those are the other ones I did were Mark 3. Directory, smelting. I Should I have smelting a different directory? Probably not. I might actually move them. Um, I feel like a different directory would be like foundations and, you know, things with beams would be its own directory. Or roads. I think all my basic factory stuff like this can be one 
And I can just do different categories for like smelting, production, you know, whatever. Um, okay. So then if I were to clear this, I, I have saved it just to make sure. So if I wanted like a six foundry design, um, I would do one here. Which way are the uh, items going? Going that way. Okay, so I want as much space. that way as I can. Okay. And then this one. All right. This one would go like, so yeah, we would want it, I think right here. Yeah, those are all in line. That feels that feels right. Um, and then I can get rid of. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Get rid of these guys. Are we just gonna get really lucky? And I can just vertical all of them to the same one could i have done that with constructors oh no because these alternate right the outputs are not in the same spot with the other one i had to put mergers because the outputs spit two items into the same spot and there's no merger into conveyor lift option i do think that'd be really cool a four-way merger where you can connect the top of it to a conveyor lift uh that feels like a really great idea why is that not a thing um, that should totally be a thing. Anyway, so, oh, we also have to change the inputs. Oh, yeah, we got problems. We got all sorts of problems. Um, because I still want only two inputs. So what we're going to have to do is raise the inputs or the output. Where was it facing before? I want the inputs to be... I want these to be the inputs still. Okay. So, let's deconstruct this. I do think I'm going to have to raise them because now we're going to have to have this guy go over to be the input for the one across from it. So yeah, we're gonna have to I have to make some changes here. And these ones I can remove completely. We're using the other belt as the output. These ones I can remove. Because again, same same ah, don't deconstruct that. Oh, I'm sorry, I just realized we're still recording for future YouTubians. I'm gonna pause until we're done with this blueprint. <laughs> sorry guys. All right, future YouTubians, we're back. I gave up on the 6x foundry one. I didn't think it was worth it, but we have our 3x foundry. We have an 8x constructor. We have a 3x assembler, which again is perfectly modular and I can add a bunch in a row. Um, I think I have a 4x constructors. No, that's the old one. I need to do a new version for the four, just 4x constructors. For now, I can just do the 8x and delete some. And then I just now did the smelters x6 and so i'll be able to you know just plop a couple of these one for one for iron or two and then i can easily um i still don't know the difference between build mode default and build mode blueprint um someone will have to educate me But yeah, the best part is I can place another one of those blueprints. Can I copy a blueprint? I don't know if I can do that. Um, 
So six smelters is enough for 180, right? Six times 30. So I'm going to need two in a row of this. And it looks like we need more encased industrial beams. Because it costs a lot <laughs> to do all these Mark IV belts. But, but yeah, I can basically line these up as close as I want. Um, technically, I should probably just... It said nudge exceeded max distance, but I should probably just line it up so they overlap and then just delete. Um, yeah. So I'll place that, but then these are now overlapping, so I have to delete one set. Oh, but it deletes both sets at the same time. Interesting. Um, okay, that one didn't. Weird. And then these belts are not going to naturally connect, I don't think. I'm pretty sure... I wish you could place an item... Um, what can I... How can I do that? I guess I can set the smelter... I don't have any iron ingots, though. Test it with. And I'm actually really curious if those... I'm guessing those are not connected belts. And it's a tricky... Tricky thing. Let me grab... Here, we'll just grab some iron ore from this guy. And then we should be able to... Or I guess I can just do that. We should be able to test it. I don't have power up here yet. Fix that. Um... Alright, so those are powered up. Now let's see if I were to put iron in here. Oh, I need to connect this power to the next one. Yeah, yeah, that's as I thought. It does get stuck there, so we need to deconstruct both. And then connect them across. And I'm actually fine without having the stack of poles there. Sweet! So, I mean, that is the power of blueprints. This used to be so much work before blueprints existed. And I know blueprints aren't a 1.0 thing, but they're new since the last time I played. And boy golly gosh, is that amazing that I've got this little compact gym that can smelt 360 iron ingots a minute, and it only took me like two seconds to connect everything. And now iron goes in there, iron ingots come out there. Amazing. And so yeah, this is gonna be where we're gonna bring ore in, uh, and then we're gonna have... I think I decided this between pausings. Basically, I, the plan is to do a smelting section, we're going to smelt everything into ingots because smelting is mostly like there's not a lot of choice to be made and we can always rebuild if we if we want to use one of the alternative coppers or the alternative steels I can always rebuild but most of smelting is in one spot. I also consider quartz uh, in a constructor as smelting. I consider concrete to be smelting and I consider the reanimated SAM to be smelting. Basically everything you do with raw ore is the smelting step. And that'll all happen in one section, and those things will get put onto belts. And the ore will only go as far as it needs to, to go into the smelting. And then we'll have all the products, you know, in spots over here, that will then go into the production areas. What is going on here? Did I paint with swatches somehow? I think I accidentally swatched a couple. That's funny. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, we'll be doing uh, more of this factory in coming episodes. Finally doing like big proper builds. And this is all just on the ground floor, right? We can, we'll probably add a second floor when we start doing oil processing in here. But at least for now, this is enough space for iron, copper, and steel, I think. So yeah, we're already an hour and 10 minutes into this YouTube episode. So for people who are not live, but here from the future, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you're here live, stick around. We're going to keep streaming. I'll see you guys in the next one.